This is a HeadGum Original. Ladies, gentlemen, people of Earth, every kind of person in between, welcome to History of Heat, presented by StockX and HeadGum. My name is Yasser Lester. His name is... I'm Isaiah Lester. His name is Isaiah Lester. That's his name. Call (laughs) him by his name. (laughs) You heard the voice. You heard the voice. (laughs) Call him by his name. (laughs) The very famous movie written about Isaiah Lester. (laughs) (laughs) An artistic movie, Isaiah. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Art. Art. That's right, ladies and gentlemen and people of Earth. This is the art episode, folks. This is the final frontier. This is the thing that ties it all together. Now, a lot of people might be listening right now and thinking, hold up. Or I thought this was a sneaker <laughs> podcast. Or or <laughs> I thought this was a sneaker podcast. I thought this was a, a podcast about hype and FUBU, and Supreme, and FUBU, and Box Logo Tees, and FUBU Box Logo Tees. Nah, 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 Changi. It, it is all those things, but it's also about the art of FUBU. It's about art as a collective, and it's about the original heat, FUBU art, and art as a general thing. Uh, we're going to be talking about art. Art is the original collectible. <laughs> Art is the original alternative asset class. You know, art was the original way that old people from 500 years ago used to flex on each other. They'd be like, oh, Mr. Periwinkle, I have a canvas made of something wherever this accent is from. And I own 30 people. Oh, that's also a collectible. (laughs) I like that skin canvas. (laughs) Um, so I was just thinking about sneakers and like when we were growing up, uh, first collecting sneakers, there wasn't much of a connection between sneakers and the art world. Uh, sneakers were really connected to sports. They were connected yeah. to pop culture, but they really weren't connected to the art world at all. Right. But I, I do feel like that's changed. Right. And I think that's what you're getting to. Right. Like think about all the artists who've done sneaker collabs. You know, you got your Takashi Murakamis, you got your Damien Hurst, your cause, your uh, your Daniel Arshams, you got, you know, your Lou de Guzman's. You have there's there's so many people out there that that uh, have have done that. And speaking of Louis de Guzman, uh, I, I dropped that name because he is our guest today. You know, um, Boom. Just, yeah. Organic bringing it with the organic transitions um but i do say that like so many great artists have have released like really incredible shoes um and it's not just about sneakers right it's cause doing a t-shirt collab with uniqlo it's dan arsham doing home goods collabs with ikea it's shepherd ferry and banksy and keith herring and basquiat they're uh now part of the heativerse um we're six months away from talking about jeff coon's xbox are we do you think six months <laughs> Do you believe that? I'll give it six months. But today we are going to be talking with one of our favorite artists, uh, now the homie, uh, Chicago's own Louis de Guzman. Uh, we're going to talk to him about the art world and the heat world and how they get along, right? We're also going to talk to him about the creative process. We're going to talk to him about his New Balance 574s that just dropped. And then later on the show, as always, we'll be joined by Jesse Einhorn, who just made some noise. You might as well say hi, Jesse. Go ahead. Hi, guys. Oh, my God. Even the way you say, hey, guys, it's just like, what is going on? Anyway, we got Jesse and we're all just kind of sick of hearing him. You know what I mean? Just like, it's like, come on. You know what? He's a like, anytime he talks there, I'm just like, come, what are we doing? Right? Yeah. It's just like, what's going on here? What what's is going this? on here? Yeah. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? The stock X credit is just, it's just, you know, it started at 10,000 and it's just, it's just slowly going down. It's like, it's like the opposite of the squid gang, uh, squid game piggy bank. It's like the money's just being People sucked. Died. People, People died. People died. Yeah, you're right. We shouldn't just. I don't want to be associated with that. But Jesse, here's the thing. <laughs> the, the way you just brought it up, are you willing to die to keep that stock X credit from us? You need to think about this. Would you be willing <laughs> uh, to die? <laughs> yeah, I'd be willing to die. Okay. I was <laughs> listeners, I was, you heard it. <laughs> I was informed on the last episode that I had to stick up for myself. So I am ready to die to oh, deprive you of my that stock. Okay. Okay. Right. Here's the thing. Your mom right. and dad, they're now yep. proud. But this is the bad part. We do have to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> 
let's save it for the end of the episode. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll wait. Yeah, we still yeah. have questions. We'll wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, have, we yeah. You still have, you have to work. You still yeah. Work. <laughs> yeah. We got questions about the art world, idiot. We need you to answer them. Uh, this, everybody, is History of Heat. Zaya, the music. When the music comes, that's when you know we're about to get sirs. We're about to get sirs. You know what I'm saying? Bro, um, sir, yes. sir. Sirius XM Radio. Sirius XM Radio. We're plugging Sirius XM Radio on a podcast, which feels inherently like they're probably like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Their podcasts are putting us out of business. <laughs> um, but Zaya, like, uh, we've been talking about collecting. We've talked about collectibles. We and, and now we're, like, getting to the pinnacle of what all of it is, which is art. So, like, what are the things that you have that you love, that you that you cherish in terms of art pieces? There's a lot that that is a pretty uh, it's a pretty broad canvas for me if I can say so. Whoa. Uh, I have actual art that I could have commissioned. Mm-hmm. Um, Jasmine Rodriguez, jazz on vinyl, one of my favorite artists, um, has painted multiple things for me, and um, also she just did. Uh, this is another thing I consider a piece of art, but I gave her a blank pair of sneakers and a pair of air force one psny highs it was the collab Ooh. um it was the all white pair really didn't i mean it was a pair i was sitting on for such a long time and i i couldn't really i didn't really couldn't decide what i wanted to do with it and then i finally just was like can you paint these and she was like sure and um she painted them for me and they're and they're super dope now um so I have that. I've got cause companions. Every single cause piece. I'm one of those people where I'm like, he's he's sitting, you know, crisscross applesauce and crying into his hands, and I'm like, this is me. This speaks to me. <laughs> this is a piece. This is if there's a piece of art that represents me, it is this piece of art. Or uh, you know, it's just um, or laying flat on his stomach crying. I'm just like, this is definitely speaking to me. Yeah. But like, it's it's hard. I mean, there's I have clothing that I consider art. I have. You know, like, uh, I have photographs I consider art. I just have, um, I've got a lot of different things, but in terms of uh, collecting, it's definitely like the, uh, like the cost companions and the actual art pieces that I get commissioned, um, that in some, a lot of sneakers like Virgil Abloh, you know, um, it doesn't need to be said, but that man was an artist in the truest form um, Yeah, with his clothing, um, with it, with, with every, every kind of art he did. Um, and especially yeah. with the shoes, uh, uh, it is, that is the difference between like, if you wear, uh, an, an air force one, uh, a black or a white air force one, a white, and you see his version of an air force one, you can tell that the shoe is just a canvas for where art can be made. Right. Um, so I've got plenty of, of, plenty of things like that, that I consider art. um, yeah. What about you, my friend? I know you're you're quite the artist yourself. Oh, you know? you first do a of all, something. come on, buddy. You 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 know I can I can do a little something. You know what I mean? I can I can do a little something. something. Um. Well, first of all, yes. I just like I've you know clearly always appreciated it. Uh, art came to me through comic books, right? And right. I, I think that's for both of us. I would say like, and now like. You know, I'm like in it for real. And so I actually wrote down a list of people that like that are my favorite artists that I've like either bought pieces from or I'm about to and just that I love. So uh, here's my list of my favorite artists and who uh, the type of art that they do like MK Comins, uh, Mm -hmm. non-binary artists. They're absolutely incredible. They they do a lot of like uh, like surrealist figurative stuff. Uh, Barry Johnson, black figurative painting, Uh, Brittany Tucker. Uh, she does painting. She's a, she's a black figurative artist too, but she always like the motif of her pieces is that her boyfriend in them is always a very simple cartoon and she's painted very detailed. Phenomenal. Carrie Turner's this dude who uh, does like very intense detailed uh, paintings, like figurative paintings, but it's just like a dude showing off his grill and stuff like that. They're awesome. Yeah, I've seen that stuff. It's really great. 
Yeah, he's he's awesome. Uh, I showed you a picture of him, and you're like, "This dude actually kind of looks like me." <laughs> was your <laughs> was your response? It made me laugh. Uh, Alana Vanacor, another phenomenal artist, does figurative stuff, but now is like moved into like cutting some landscape stuff and really cool NFTs. Uh, again, Doriel Kaimi or Kami, sorry, she does cool figurative stuff, um, all female based. Michael Kagan, who's most known for. Uh, his work with uh, Billionaire Boys Club, he does a lot of it. He's like the person who designed the the simplest form of like the helmet logo that they have. Um, he does a lot of stuff with them. Uh, Nina Chanel Abney, she just recently, who I, I think she's out of this world, she most recently did that Meek Mill album cover that everyone got up in arms about with the geometric figures. Uh, she's phenomenal. Mishan Sanders, who we've commissioned many times, she actually did a phenomenal portrait of our grandmother that we gifted to my mom. Um, Teravat Tel Lapisan, who's a Persian artist out of this world. Kevin Christie, who's a skateboarder, comedian, and a phenomenal figurative painter. Um, and then you have Ron Weck, who does like these giant hyper-realistic statues of people, like sculptures. So it's like you walk into a room and there's a 40 by 40 foot statue of just like a man laying on his side that like has real hair. It's like, it's out of this world. I suggest everyone check it out. Connor Harrington, uh, Roberto Lugo, who's a like one of the most famous like black pot potist potteryist i don't know the actual term um alexandra turner who does uh, a lot of illustration stuff she's she's out of this world and then shana mccoy who does like very thick paintings she does very like uh th- I, it sounds weird but she forms the paint to make the figures in her paintings. she actually just did a huge collab with kith she was part of their monday program uh, oh not too long ago yeah yeah um, i remember they did they profiled a few different artists correct yeah uh she's she's just one of my favorite artists and and someone that kith has just recently profiled but uh and, and there's so many more and i could keep going on and on and on but those are the, those are some of the few that come off the top of my head so like I say all that to say that, like, you know, like, and not to get all emo, but I think, like, visual art especially is, like, the thing that kind of drives me most, like, uh, and even if we're talking about videos, like, I watch Kanye videos for, like, inspiration, even for writing stuff. You know, I, I think, like, the Follow God video and the Close on Sunday videos are two of the most, for how simple they are, they're two of the most incredible videos that have come out in, like, the past two years or so. Like, I, I really can't get a, a, enough of, like, the things that he does and like so i'll say that like that's not like in terms of like if that were become to become an nft like the the close on sunday video i might try and buy that you know what i mean that would be kind of the closest thing i get to it i think for right now but like i i I just like again like i just have such an appreciation for it and like i and this is like again very emo but it's like i look at the way like Isaiah dresses or like puts an outfit together and I'm like, okay, like how does that like translate into a story or whatever, or just into drawing something, you know? And I feel like for me, like Isaiah, I feel like the thing that balances out Isaiah a lot too in his writing is like his love of like sports and stuff like that. I think you need both sides, right? And like he can draw from that kind of like intensity and stuff. And I feel like my other half is like, it comes from like seeing something like, even if it's, you know, I'm not saying like seeing something and it's like, how can I turn that into a story? But like, just like seeing a really incredible painting and like, what does that feeling feel like? And then like trying to convert that into, into something more tangible, you know? Well, yeah, absolutely. And uh, it, like you were saying, I think in terms of writing for me, it's a, it's not, it's everything, you know, and you mentioned Kanye West, but I remember the, the moment that turned me from you know, a writer or a want to be writer into what I consider to be an artist is I watched Kanye perform runaway at the VMAs. He was in a red suit and it was all white light and he had these ballerinas coming out and they would slowly just kind of, it was like, it was the, it was the same thing as like the talking heads documentary um, where it builds from one person on stage to like every, like throughout the entire show to being like a full band and dancers and everything filling up the stage. It's just like, it was that addition in a way that I hadn't seen. And I hadn't seen like a hip hop dude essentially in a, a drug suit (laughs) with a keyboard with ballerinas. It was like, Oh my God, I didn't know all these things even went together or could be allowed in the same space. And that's what, that's what started a kind of cultivating how I looked at things or thought of stories right. was like 
what what doesn't belong together but that belong like that you can put together and what would that feel like like you said what does this poster f- make me feel or what does this what does this one shot in a movie make me feel or right how somebody delivered a joke a comedian delivered a certain joke how does that make me feel you right. know how did it feel how did it feel when i you know used to eat my my grandma's gumbo and that what 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 all that kind of stuff um kind of ends up building into something that you can, in a way you can express yourself. And right. um, I think that was, that that was always the biggest takeaway for me is like, it was always stuff like that was, that would shock me in a way that wasn't necessarily outwardly shocking. Like it wasn't like, you know, Howard Stern farted on air. It was like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he farted right in Robin's face. It wasn't like nothing like that. It's just like, Oh my god! I didn't know that worked like that. Right, and seeing somebody, seeing somebody even make that effort was always like, oh my god! Yeah, you know, my mind was blown. Yeah, and I, you, you know, like, because I'll even say like, and this is, you know, I'm gonna shout out our mom and and sister too. Like, they're just so. Like, I, I will say, and, like, I hate to be like, we come from a creative family, but, like, you know, our mom is a black woman from Berkeley, California. She's more out there than she is, like, you know, I'm a banker, you know, and she's always, like, I don't even know, like, and this is, I, I joke with her about this. But I'm like, I don't even know if you were fostering our artistic t- talents or side more than you were just kind of, like, live on your own planet. Like, I don't even think she thought about the artistry of it. But, right. like, she really did encourage us to – she was just, like, just be your own person. That is kind of the only way you'll be happy, you know? And, like, she's always fostered that. Our, our sister is like that. You know, our sister's a barber but still, like, takes so much of, like, what she considers to be, like, the artistry that inspires her and, like, does it with hair. And, like, you know, I, I just, like – I'm really glad all of us kind of exist in this, like, this plane of of artistry. And there's just two more people I'd like to – name in terms of of influences that I think influence both of us too. And that's Andre 3000 and Missy Elliott. I kind of don't think that like I even like when we talk about people, it's like, I didn't even know you could do that. Like it's like Missy Andre and like, even like Michael Jackson, like I don't think he gets enough. Like I, people are like, yes, he's a phenomenal performer, all that stuff. But it's like, the world he introduced us to and his videos and stage productions and all that stuff. You're like, how did this guy exist? You know? And you know, I, you know what? Uncancel Michael Jackson. That's the thing I'm saying (laughs) on this podcast. (laughs) But, but I say all that to say that like, those are people that like kind of took it to the limit, even Pharrell back in the day where you're like, you know, I'm a young idiot black skateboarder who's not good, but like seeing him also not be good, but also be black in a skateboarding, being like, oh, wow, this is tight. And then like Virgil later and being like, I'm I'm older and I'm still into skating and all that stuff. And we kind of talked about it with uh, Young God, Steve Barra and Robert, uh, Robert Neal and Brianna King. But like. It, it it like uh, art is the thing that binds all of these things together, right? Like art at the end of the right. day is the thing that even keeps me and you, Isaiah. I think like like I, of course we're tied because we're we're tied together because we're brothers. But it's like it's such a shared mutual interest. Where it's like you know we do have things like Isaiah knows sports more than I'll ever know. It's not necessarily all sports. I every sport that I watch necessarily translates into me wanting to be an artist or, or motivates me in some way. It's the people, it's like any other field. Yeah. It's the people who really, who are really about their craft are the ones that are like, I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is, this is, this is artistry in a way. You're just doing it with your body. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I think that's Mm -hmm. exactly right. Um, and, uh, now I feel like, it's kind of the best transition as we're, you know, like gushing about how incredible art is that uh, we can bring on our, our special guest for the episode. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with Louis de Guzman. All right, people of Earth, we're back. Can I say, Isaiah, we got one of the heavy hitters. We got Oof. one of... We got one of the bangers, you know. We got one of the folks that keeps the streets on fire. You know what I'm saying? I like it. Um, we're both just such a fan of this dude. Like, talk about uh, a genre crossing and blending, like, artist, designer, 
uh, everything in between. I just we, we're, we're we're so hyped for this dude. He actually just uh, dropped a collab with New Balance. Did his own um, five Ooh. seven four. Woo! Oh jeez! <laughs> Um, we're super excited to have them, y'all. Uh, uh, make some noise at home. Start clapping for Louis de Guzman, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Let's what's up, go. Lou? What's, good, what's going on? What's going on? Good morning. Good morning. Happy Friday, guys. Happy to be here. Oh man! First of all, look, people on, on at home listening can't see you, but you yeah. look fly. <laughs> We have a, we have an event tonight to celebrate the new balances in Chicago. So I was like, let me just get ready for the day because you know one of those oh. Fridays we just keep moving. Okay, so that that's actually uh, so here's the thing that actually leads into our first question. I'll I'll, I'll hit you first, and then then Zay I'll hit you from the other side. Um, yeah, you have an event in Chicago Crazy. for again your own shoe. You're a Chicago native. Like first of all, what's the homecoming feel like? And secondly, like, what is going on in Chicago? Like, it's it, Chicago <laughs> to me is like either the craziest violent story I've ever heard, or it's like a genius comes out. And do those things play <laughs> into one another? <laughs> yeah, um, man. Like, you know, everyone's like, "What's in the water in Chicago?" And I think it's just like, you know, it's it's a community full of creatives. You know, it's like, you know, we all come from such a diverse community of like, whether you're an artist, musician, uh, designer, or just, I don't know. It's just our community is so strong. It's, it's so inspiring. You know, everyone treats each other like, like homies, like friends. Like it's, it's not as big as people think it'd be, you know, it's like, we all come from the same neighborhoods, uh, similar upbringings, but more so I think in similarities as far as just like, you know, goal driven goes, you know, everyone has such big dreams here that we just stay, you know, either in the studio or our workplace, just kind of keeping our head down and working, you know, it's so special. And we get all this energy from you guys all over the, all over the country and the world that just, you know, shows us mad love every time. So it's like, I hear the same thing and it's like, I think we're doing something right. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Like, what what do you think, like, advantage-wise, a Chicago holds over, like, an L.A. or New York? And I know you're kind of saying just, like, the sense of community, but, like, yeah. do, do you think that, like, just keeping it that tight <laughs> or, like, even, like, cause I mean, like, of course you guys, you know, have your museums and all that stuff, but, like, there is yeah. something a little bit different, like, I, and, and this is just me experiencing it as a, uh, you know, as a uh, spectator, but it feels yeah. more... Um, it doesn't feel as like commerce driven. Of course, people are trying to make money, but it doesn't feel like yeah. the, whole, the the gallery scene doesn't feel the same way like it feels in the other two cities. Absolutely. Yeah, it's very just, you know, in Chicago, it's like you just got to put your work out and see what the, uh, you know, see what the side effect is. You know, I think people here are just so prideful of like what they make, you know, and I think for me growing up in the 90s, you know, like I was born and raised here in, in, in the suburbs of Chicago, but like my family came here from the Philippines and like right. one of the first cultural things I was exposed to was basketball. And you don't hear the story all the time, like the Bulls in the 90s and Jordan, Robin, Pippen, like that was like culture for us. And seeing how much those guys win or would win games or just have all these like legendary moments as kids and as adults, you know, it's just like, it was so inspiring. You know, it made us want to work harder. It's like our team is literally worldwide right now. People know who Michael Jordan is. People know who Scottie Pippen is, Dennis Rodman, like all the greats and the goats in that team. And it was just such a culture thing. It was everything from like the logo, you know, the way they played, the way they carried themselves, all the swag they just like came up with. And seeing that as kids, it's like, we want to be a part of that. You know, my first memories was always trying to redraw the Chicago Bulls logo as a kid. I couldn't play basketball. I like a draw. <laughs> yeah. I could came up, come up, you know, try to come up with like the logo and just different iterations as like a elementary school kid, you know, like no questions asked. So I think it's like that sense of pride when it comes to sports, when it comes to just the culture here, you know, the air is different. It's just like, we're just so dialed into our community that it's like, you know, we're, we're inspired by New York and LA. We're inspired by all of people all over the world, but like, it's, it's good to know that we can also inspire those across the way. Uh, me and Yasser, yeah, absolutely. we actually like split that talent where he could draw yeah. the Chicago Bulls logo, but I could play basketball. Yasser cannot hoop, but he can draw. Let it be known. Yasser cannot hoop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why are you doing this? Yeah. So I just want you to tell us a little bit about your your first big uh, like exhibit. How did it come about? Were the positive and negatives like what was that whole experience like putting something like that together? 
Um, man, it's you know it's been it's been four years of really you know driving full force mm-hmm. and like you know following the passion of art and design like on my own you know without like working for like a brand or as a designer and I think mm-hmm. like you know things happen for a reason. I'm a big believer in that. Things like our timing is everything. So like the first big show, um, literally it was very very random. It's just like. One of my friends, Drew the Barber, he owns No Cuts, No Glory. You know, shout out to Drew in uh, Chicago Avenue. And, you know, I was putting out the Simpsons work and it was really just for fun. It was like, you know, prints of like Simpsons reinterpreted work uh, that was for a friend's birthday. And, you know, I posted one on Instagram one day and all of a sudden people were like, yo, this is crazy. Can you do more? And I was like, well, let me just have fun with it. Like I just had fun with it. And going back to Drew, he like DM me. He's like, man, we have to have a show for you at my barber shop. And, you know, yeah. I'm... It's not a traditional gallery. It's a barbershop. And it's not like a, you know, a, a really traditional way of doing that. But I was like, oh, let's, let's, let's try it. Let's do it. You know, and, you know, my best friend and uh, business partner and to this day, Austin Neely, who's on the, on this as well. He um, was like, yo, like, you know, we, we would always be at his place. And, you know, we would just always talk ideas. And like, we were at his uh, old condo in South Loop and just kicking it. And all of a sudden we're like, yo, like, can you guys come with me to this barbershop to help set up the show? And we just like, you know, putting things in full circle, like, you know, full force of just like having fun with it, being homies in Chicago, just supporting one another. And next thing you know, it was like my, my, me being like, you know, just wanting to invite the world. I was like, oh, this is invite only, right? I put the flyer on Instagram, <laughs> invite only <laughs> to this gallery exhibit. <laughs> and, you know, a, a place that could hold probably like up. 20 people max. We probably had like 80, 90 people then that night. And Damn. yeah, yeah, we just, you know, it was such a good night, you know, people seeing the work up front instead of just through the screen. And we walked out of that, out of that barbershop and Austin was like, hey, like we should do this on a bigger scale. Like let's have it at um, the agency that he used to work at called the Annex um, and they host events. And a month later we had a big, we had the same pieces, but like on a bigger scale for the city to come and the rest was history. That's insane. Dog, that's ill. Like I, you yeah, because I'll, 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 you know, like I'm a, you know, again, a little bit of an artist myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I'll say this, like Instagram has changed the way, right, that uh, that any of us interact with anything, right? Like, again, yeah. like we were talking about Isaiah, like flipping sneakers and, uh, you know, just all that kind of stuff. And it's like, you know, again, back in the day, right, Lou, yeah. like you'd, you'd have the big show and then, you know, hopefully someone from a paper or someone like comes and critiques. But now See it's like it. you just yep. take the picture and you put it up and you're like, oh, my God, like, am I like, am I about to get roasted? Right. But like it, it is yeah. like there is something more magical again, like you don't know how many people are going to come and then it's bigger than you expected and all that stuff. I just think that like, yeah. that is like such a weird lost art in and of itself is like the actual yeah. exhibit or exhibition itself, you know, is, is kind of, is, is kind of interesting. But like for you, like what, like, how do you choose like your muse or like what brands to collaborate, right? Like, you know, or collaborate with, you know, we just, we were just talking about the new balance thing or like Adam versus Astro. Like what, what, yeah. how, how do you, I, I think that especially in a world right now where it's like everyone, especially artists, right? It, it's, I feel like we're in the middle of a huge resurgence in terms of like just a, an art appreciation, right? And like yeah. so much of this stuff is blending and like you don't want it to be the cash grab. Like someone like you, I think, who has like true longevity, right? You you, you don't want to just be the person that's pumping out everything. But at the same time, yeah. it's like, yeah, I want to do something interesting and fun and smart and also make money. Like, so it's like where, where – do you have like, and I, I'm not even saying you need to get into the like philosophy or belief system of it all, but like, yeah. why are you like, I will work with a new balance or like, I'll work with these people or, you know what I'm saying? Like what, where are you yeah. mindset wise is, is I guess what I'm asking. My mindset is my family, you know, it's like them sacrificing so much to give me like life here and like, yeah. Things I couldn't afford, they try to work overtime so they could afford it so I could experience having like, you know, having cable TV to watch Spongebob, you know, having enough money to get a pair of shoes. You know, my dad used to buy me uh, New Balances yeah. in middle school. You know, back in the day, they were two for 90, 574s. Right. And that's yeah. All they, 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 yeah, that's all I could afford. So I would wear 574s all through middle school and it was fire. You know, they had like the simple yeah. either navy or black colorway and I would just always rock those, you know. Yep. Um, so it, it's like… The things that I do have to mean something and meaning for me is like, it brings me back to a time I remember when life was just so simple. 
but like kind of paying it forward and pay, giving it back to like, hey, my parents, my family sacrificed a lot for me to obtain these things. Let me work. Let me do the things that I enjoy and kind of bring me back to those, you know, good old days and give them the life that they never had. That's very dope. I didn't know that story about the That's shoes. That's awesome. Like, you don't hear that a lot. Like usually it's like someone's like, oh, well, they gave me a Jordan 3 to work on. So I worked yeah. on a Jordan 3 and that's it. But the fact that it's the sneaker that you really used to wear is pretty amazing. Right. Yeah. No, nah, thank um, you. So talk about the tension uh, between traditional gatekeepers versus artists uh, who come through like the streetwear scene. Like, how is it different? I think it's different because it's like, you know, um, the streetwear scene, like a lot of the artists that I know, like, you know, mutual right. friends, like, you know, shout to like Josh Vides, you know, the homie in L.A., like him and yeah. I have similar, similar stories. You know, he was a graphic designer as well, you know, designing, uh, but always had a passion for drawing and art. You know, it's like a lot of and even not just Josh, like a lot of my friends, like in Chicago or growing up with, like we were all hungry for to be graphic designers, you know, to be in, in the streetwear, you know, like having like our art on t-shirts, how, how to use Photoshop, how to use Illustrator, how to put drawings on like clothing, you know. I think that era, like in the 2000s and like mid 2000s, late 2000s, like I was in high school, it was like, yo, let me, um, let me get down to business. Let me try to see how I can like uh, apply these, apply these drawings into that. So it's like, that was my way of like trying to put my work out there in the beginning was like, oh, how can I put my art onto t-shirts so and then yeah t-shirts you know you think about that you think about streetwear you think about design and and so from that it's like oh you know maybe this could be more than just a t-shirt so yeah like people in the beginning focus just on the fine practice you know the legends and just you know being in the studio painting and really putting in the uh, the time and all like the work to make their visuals come to life on a canvas but then like you know young adults like myself like you know i i started with like i, I love to draw as a kid my mom had me draw all the time in her craft shows when no one would watch me. And right. it was like, yo, like, let me just see what I can do, you know? And it was one or the other. I just knew I wanted art, you know? And I think now it's like you going back to what you guys said about social media, that you can see everything on Instagram. It's like, you're looking at visual yeah. stimulants to kind of get you excited or kind of inspire you. So whether you put it on a t-shirt, whether on shoes, whether on canvas, you know, the world is beyond the rectangle now. We're, we're living in a visual world. Everything we look at is art. I look at this water bottle on my desk. I look at this yeah. book, anything, you know, your hat, everything is art. You know, someone sat there and did, uh, you know, typography work, yeah. you know, just sat there and drew every letter perfectly to fit your hat. And that's the artist to me. So, you know, it's all those uh, disciplines. He's off camera, but do you think Jesse is art? Hey, Jesse, can you show your <laughs> face to Lou real quick? Do you think, do you think Jesse is art? <laughs> Jesse's art, man. We're all, you know, humans are beautiful, bro. Oh, Everybody's art. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. See? Good this is the type of respect bro. I expect. <laughs> oh, God. I went and, from being a wet blanket to art. Wow. Yeah, I will say the fact that Lou is now objectively a liar kind of hurts. But uh, what? This will this will this will be our last our last thing for you. But you're kind of talking about this, right? Like. Everything is now art, right? Like quite, and everything has been art, right? Like design, yeah. it, you can't just, you know, a microphone has to be designed somehow, you know, like yeah. there's, a, yeah. it, it is everywhere. But now, and I have strong feelings and, and uh, I don't know if everyone else does, but I'd love to talk to you about it. But we're looking at the future of what art is, right? Yeah. And we're looking yeah. at like, you know, for the sake of argument, uh, an NFT, Right. NFTs, like, and I'm yep. not I'm not here for you to say you don't have to answer whether you like them or not or whatever. But it's like seeing like this new because it's not even a new medium like digital painting and digital art has existed. But where it's it exists thing, yeah. is is now what we're we're kind of experiencing for the first time. Right. Like, absolutely. To you, and I guess this is kind of a pointed question. But like, first of all, do you think. What do you think the future of the art world looks like? Do you think it's it, do you think it veers towards NFTs or do you think it it stays more con traditional? Do you think it's a hybrid and more like as someone who again like does uh, digital art themselves, right? Like, do you do you, how do you I guess like marry the ideas of like what they are and and like how you want to carry forward and like creating this digital art? Do you want to keep them in a a digital space, like, I mean, you have so many amazing prints and like, to me, like, you know, that's the thing that you want in your house, right? Like, I I, I guess like, I 
For yeah. you personally, what, do you do you see the world, the art world, going more NFT and staying digital, or do you do you mm-hmm. think it stays in a more analog space, quite literally taking space yeah. in our homes? I think it's it's both it's hybrid, you know. I think it's it's a mixture of both, you know. Like some people, like myself, have like digital backgrounds. Others have, right. you know, pen to paper backgrounds, and you know, it's like right. it's a mixture of all those. You know, it's it's visual stim- stimulants. How do you how do you put your idea out there? What tool are you using? Right, an idea in your head to be visually seen. No matter how you put it out out there, it's seen. You know what I'm saying? Like you're having your your feelings out there, and you know, for me, it's like drawing and prints, and you know, Adam Versch Astral, Those were all paintings, hand painted pieces. You know, the sculpture, right. all that. Like those were all like, you know, done in studio. You know, just right. sitting there with the team and just creating away. It's just like, it's 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 a conversation. You know, I think it's like as as human beings, like we're forever students. We're gonna learn how this world works and we adapt and adjust to what we're exposed to and see. And I think, you know, your question about NFT or is it more galleries? I think it's both, you know? I feel like it's going in a direction where it's like this like super creature of, you know, the future, you know? And Mom- and galleries do this now, like fine art museums. You go to like a MoMA, you'll see like paintings from like the 1800s, right? But then you'll go to a room, you'll see analog, like yeah. digital things, like, you know, light rooms and just all this crazy stuff that needs technology yeah. to power that. It's a mixture of right. both, ex- experiential. It's like, it's, it's, uh, it's very, you know, it's, it's visually stimulant, you know, either, and this is how I see it now. And like realizing this is like either a painting starts from a digital render sketch or a freehand or a digital render sketch starts from a freehand or digital rendered, you know, video starts from a sketch. So it's, it's cross. Right. Yeah, yeah. No. Okay. And that, here's the thing. That's all valid. I, I guess like I, I I'm more. I, I'm also old. But like as someone who lives <laughs> in like an analog world, still granted. Yes, we're all we're all on our phones. Blah blah blah. All that stuff. Like, yeah. I still like art hanging on my wall. Like I also am like the person who like I get afraid that like one day Apple or Google or whoever is going to crash and all of the movies I bought on iTunes are going to go away. So I still like buy Blu-rays and DVDs. Oh, yeah. In case the internet goes out, like I'm like, I need, I want to be entertained, right? So like I I say all of that to then say um, like the NFT space or the metaverse of it all, because that's the thing. It's like all, again, like you're saying, it's all art, right? And it's all experienced. Like I guess like, for me, and this, my opinion means nothing, but like, I guess I'm more excited to see how this digital art space now exists, right? Like, to me, yeah, like, when, like, to see like one of your actual uh, statues come to life in like a metaverse or an Oculus, like, to me, that's the thing I want to see, right? Like, I guess, yeah. like, when people are like, I own this NFT, I'm like, I, yeah, but like, I can just see a board eight yacht club JPEG on my phone. Like, make it come to life. I want to see what a board ape looks like. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I want to see this thing living and breathing. But, like, but again, someone with you that has such a dynamic style, I just, I, I'm excited to see what you do with it as well. But again, like, it's like everything you've created has, as like you were saying, like, is a painting, is a, you know, whatever. And I'm sure you, you know, probably do your sketches in Procreate or whatever. But like, um, yeah. Anyway, it's just it's just interesting to see where it'll go. Someone whose style can easily be adapted to that, like yourself is who I'm talking about, will be very interesting to see what 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 you're going to do with it next, you know? And it's like again, someone whose style so much blends again like, you know, what would be quote unquote street art, you know, and is now being exhibited globally is just it's it's very interesting to see. So, um I'm a size 10 and a half, Isaiah's a size 12. Jesse doesn't need <laughs> shoes. Um, and we'll send <laughs> you our home addresses and you can just, you know, just make sure that, just make sure it's a <laughs> lot of stuff that you send us, you know, and then make cool. sure it's double. So we, we have a backup, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> uh, but for real, man, yo, thank you so much yeah, for this is so talking awesome. with us, man. Like, uh, no, thank so you guys. Exciting to meet thank you. you guys. And, uh, me and Isaiah are gonna, uh, come move in with you. So just like make a, make a spot for us and Jesse can sleep outside. I'll pull up, man. Chicago's Chicago. You guys are mother welcome to whenever studio visits whenever. Awesome. Yeah. Hell yeah. I love that. All yeah, right, man. Thank you so sure. much. Have a good one. All right. All right. Thanks Appreciate guys. You, Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Welcome to StockX, the only live marketplace for what's now and next. From the most historic heat to the latest instant classics, StockX specializes in giving everyone access to what they want and love. 
With StockX, you have the power to shop millions of hard to find or sold out products at their true market value. And thanks to StockX's live marketplace, you have the ability to instantly shop the latest and greatest. Download the app or sign up online to start buying and selling in a few easy clicks. That's right. You can use the code HISTORYHEAT for free shipping on your first purchase of any order of $240 or more. Start shopping at StockX.com. Access the now. Welcome back. Welcome back to the History of Heat. And usually this portion, um, I got to tell you, you know, we really dragged this guy's name through the mud through this entire series. Um, we've said some things that I would never say to a person uh, to their face, but we said them to his face. Uh, we did it. Um, so I'm going to go a different way this time. I'm going to say that, you know, we're, we're meeting with uh, a top-notch guy that I think graduated college, I think. Pretty sure he graduated college. Um, yeah. a, a smart person and a likable person to some. Um, and that is Jesse Einhorn. Welcome, Jesse. Wow, I really I really appreciate that introduction. That was, uh, you know, by normal standards, a pretty, pretty lukewarm introduction. But by the standards of this podcast, one of the most... One of the wow. most inspiring and, and like thoughtful and, and touching introductions a man could ask for. Jesse, you should be so lucky he brought you on that way. Lukewarm, yeah. that's you. <laughs> I don't think that's I, fair. hundred percent. Like, like, I don't it, think that's I, fair. <laughs> it, it also, I'm saying by normal standards, by, by the standards of my standards, it, it was a great introduction. And I just want to say I did, I did graduate from college. That's cool. I didn't. So the shout out to me for that. Shout Great, out to you. You man. get a point. Great. <laughs> what college? Nerd I'm, you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a master's degree in uh, it, nerd you. Uh, oh, okay. Actually, I went to Yale. Um, oh, so, yeah, like, <laughs> whoa. Okay. Wow. Okay. Then we did talk to the right person about yeah, the all this person. stuff. Um, all right, Jesse, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about art, right? And I would say that like so much of like sneakers, collectibles, clearly, even they like the electronics, all this trading is modeled after what the original, you know, market was for, again, a non, I, I, I would call a non-essential asset, but an asset nonetheless, right? And that would be art. And like the art market is booming right, right now. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, I mean, let me just talk about it from a StockX perspective because obviously that's that's what I know about. Arguably the right. only thing that I know about. All I do yeah. all day is just sit at home and look at look at StockX. So it's it's the it's the entirety of my wealth knowledge. <laughs> okay. But um, yeah, I mean, so 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 you know, from from at least a StockX perspective, you know, there is this ongoing theme of of convergence, right? And you know, pop art specifically and art generally have always, I think, been connected to to sneakers. But yeah. and 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 to streetwear and to sort of hype, but you know what you've yeah. really seen is just a continual blurring of those boundaries and 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 you increased intersection between the two, such that you know a lot of the biggest, not just like sneaker artists, but like artist artists are also the yeah. biggest artists on StockX, right? Like Cause, I believe, is like you know the most profitable art world figure uh, yeah. in the world. Like he sells more, like you know, again, art, art, like art, gallery yeah. art. Um, than anything. And, but he's also one of the biggest, you know, uh, brands, creators, designers, whatever you want to call them on stock X. Right. Uh, yeah. and so he's just like one, one example. And there are so many others, right. There's Murakami, there's Daniel Arsham. Um, you know, there's, there's a whole host of, of, of collaborators and artists who have, who've made sneakers, uh, and who've made, who've participated in this hype economy. And so, yeah, it really is like a story of convergence. And I think like, you know, arguably like we're, we're still at the early stages because, you know, if you, if you think about like where, you know, it's like at this point, like, like hype culture and like sports and music are completely uh, connected, but like, you know, I think the art world, there's still a little bit of a ways to go. There's still a lot of, you know, like integration that could take place. Um, right. And so I think like, you know, there's actually like the, the future is going to be even more filled with this stuff. Right. So do you think the art world and the hype world will continue to converge? Does the future of the art market look like the sneaker market, would you say, or like Supreme? 
Yeah. So I think like I'm I actually want to hear your thoughts on this because I I actually think like, you know, as as, as two people who who, you know, yes, or especially you're you're like an artist yourself and in the art world, like, are you going to start to see more of the like techniques and like campaigns and strategies that that these artists that these like sort of hype streetwear artists use, you know, are you going to see that sort of proliferate in the art world? And there's just going to be like more artists doing it because it seems very successful. Right. And it just resonates on like a, almost like pop, like a cult, deep cultural subconscious level, like these kind of like, like, you know, iconic, like almost like memes, like the, you know, whether it's the cause figure or like bare bricks or whatever that kind of just like seep into people's consciousness, that just seems to be a trend that you're going to, you're going to continue to see like in the art world. Uh, and I'm curious, like what your take on that is, like as someone who's in the space. Uh, I think, you know what it is? I, I think more than anything, I think it's that that's what we all understand as like a sales model now, right? Like it's yeah. not even so much it's like I'm just doing hype for the sake of doing hype. I think that we all like that's what under like I think, you know, for 300 years art was sold one way. Now a new way has been introduced that is much more artist centric, right? You don't have to go to a gallery and blah, blah, blah. It, you know, yep. it used to be you were at a gallery or you literally sold them on a corner, right? But now it's like the internet has made it DTC or direct to consumer, right? And like even, even through that, now people go like, oh, if I only do five of these, these will all sell, but then people will still want, you know, as we've said, like the the other prints just because they're afraid they won't be able to get one, right? I just feel like it's more that we understand the model now. And also artists are younger. And so because yeah. of that, because we grew up with this model, this is the way that we're selling. Now, who knows, again, like, and, 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 and when I say we, I mean the collective we, not like we as artists, because I no one please ask me for anything. Um, but, uh, but I do think, you know, people 10 years or 15 years younger than us, when they sell their art, they will do it in a completely different way that is unbeknownst to us in a world where there's a, you know, a metaverse or it's just strictly NFTs or whatever, right? Like where it, it's all a decentralized currency. Like what does that look like? Right. So, but I, I think for now it's like, yes, those things have converged, but it's converged more because we all have grown up together and we've all grown up with the same kind of models. Like, so even like people who aren't necessarily sneaker heads and like grew up with, you know, drops and hype and all that stuff, yeah. they see the way other artists are selling. And so just by nature, that's how they're selling. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's just imitation. Uh, right. Yeah. I, th I, I think that's right. I think the, and, you know, just from like a very crass, like almost like business perspective too, when you talk about the model, like the art world, you know, has to be one of the most like um, inefficient and like stodgy and like like traditional. You know, it's like right. You know, not again. Like yeah. it's it's annoying, but like the Silicon Valley thing of like what industries are like ripe for disruption. Like there's no industry <laughs> as old right. and as kind of like stuck in its ways as the art world, just because it goes so far back, right? And it's like you know, it's like galleries and and like you know, gatekeepers and critics and like the all that infrastructure that keeps the whole thing rolling. Like yes, that there's like things that are important about that, but it's also like that model is very like vulnerable to being just overthrown, right. By yeah. like artists who just go like, straight to the consumer, um, you know, who, who put out work, like using more like drop, like hype model, all the things you're talking about. And so if you think of it from that way, like almost like as like a, you know, if you're like a business person, like looking at these two industries and thinking like, you know, which one's more like likely to succeed, it's like, I don't know. It seems like that I would put my money on this, this more fast, nimble, uh, model that you're describing. Well, it's also interesting because, it, again, like the resell model and the hype model did try to exist outside of it for a second. And then like I to StockX's credit, I think, saw that and was like, we, you know, we're a part of this. We're, we're a bigger part of the culture. And like, again, I, I don't think that happens without artists doing collabs, though. I don't know if StockX yeah. ever would have moved that way. But the fact that it did happen, it, it only boosts y'all because it's also bringing in a brand new audience of people that – may have necessarily not done that stuff. And now they're like, oh, wait, these Nikes are kind of cool. And, you know, the fact that I'm seeing, you know, Takashi Murakami's print here, but then I can also see like some weird Adidas collab or whatever, you know, like kind of yep. folds them all together. And it works the other way around too, where like I'll be on StockX looking at sneakers or whatever. And then I'm like, oh, where's this Daniel Arsham thing? It'll just be like, you know, stuff you might like. And I end up clicking on that too. I always joke around like I think – the the one feature that I'm glad StockX doesn't have is a cart. You can't cart stuff <laughs> yeah. because like I would just like I would have so much stuff in that cart, yeah. and I it's like because when you got to click out five, when you click check out five times, it's clicker. It's different than clicking it once. 
<laughs> so like, having to keep going back for it would, uh, uh, yeah, that always funny. that always checks me a little bit. It's like an automatic break, yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. You're just like, oh man, I'm really glad that I can't just put like ten because I would, I would just, I would just shop on there because it usually is. I usually come for one thing and then stay for something else, or like they're introducing like I, I no, this is more of like for the collectibles why, but just for the, just for an example of it, like they were like, we're selling Lego sets. And it's like, I don't collect Legos, but I went in there and looked to see what <laughs> it was about for a minute, you know, right. the kill time, yeah. whatever. So it's like, it does the art part of it does work. It works in reverse for me. It's like, I came to check out, you know, a shirt or a, a pair of sneakers that I may have just missed out on, but I end up staying for other stuff. Right. Um, yeah. Being like, Oh, and I think that's exactly right. I mean, what you're both of you each describe, right? It's like Oscar's right that like collabs sort of had to come first, right? Because you had to kind of like spark the interest of the people, like, you know, create a bridge between one world to the other. You had to have like Futura and Murakami and all these, all these people that, you know, are in, in both spaces, like to build that bridge. But then like, once the customers started moving there, right? Like once like the people like they and like people like, you know, myself are on StockX, buying sneakers and then starting to click on these other things and starting to get into art prints and get into Legos and get into comic books. Like that creates all this demand, which incentivizes more artists to move in that direction. Right. So like suddenly it becomes this kind of virtuous cycle where, you know, like, you know, more demand, more customers mean like more artists going that direction, more collapse, which creates more demand. Anyway, it's like, it, it kind of builds and builds and builds and you can totally see that. And like, you know, the downside of course for Isaiah, right. Is that like the art prints are like orders of magnitude more expensive than like, the Jordan sneakers, which are order of the magnitude more expensive than like the cause figure. So it's like, you know, right. some of those prints go for tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah, um, right. So you got to be careful. Luckily, we don't have that cart function. So you'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, but, but getting into that, since we found a little about prices, like let's let's do a quick quiz um, yeah. as we as we do each time. Prices hype segment. I want to ask, first of all. This this should come as no surprise to anyone listening. We've been talking about it, but um, the three three of the the three biggest artists in terms of their the breadth of their catalog, the price premiums, um, the number of trades on StockX, the three of the biggest right now are, are Takashi Murakami, Cause, and and Daniel Arsham. So the first question I had for you is who has the biggest catalog out of those three? So who's who has the most number of products that that trade frequently on StockX? And then secondarily, who has the most expensive uh, product from that group? Uh, most expensive, I'm going to go with Murakami. And most products, I'm going to go with Cause. Okay, for most expensive, I'm going to go with Daniel Arsham. And then with the most products, I'm going to say Murakami. Okay, so no one got it exactly right. Each oh. of you got a little bit. Each of you got it a little bit right. So number one, the biggest catalog is is cause. I want to just say like we're talking about the runner up Murakami still has over five hundred products that That's trade crazy. frequently on stock. Yes. Yeah, uh, oh many God. of which trade like hundreds of times, thousands of times a year. So like the runner up Murakami has over five hundred. Cause though the number of products is is above eight hundred. Um, it's oh. just and just an absolutely expansive catalog. Um, the most expensive of of the three, uh, that honor also actually goes to Cause. Uh, he has a signed edition print of his Good Intentions figure that goes for sixty three thousand oh. dollars on StockX. Oh. Um, it retails for fifteen thousand, so it's actually going for three times its retail value, which is also kind of insane. Again, like art is already expensive, but then right. it resells for even more. It's like it's just That's it's wild. just crazy. That's wild. It's pretty wild. Daniel Arsham also has a bronze basketball, which actually I have a couple of friends who, who copped that and got it uh, at, at, at retail that now goes for around $20,000 uh, oh. retail for, for like 10. Uh, he's got some really cool sculptures that, that, that sell that are yeah. like very, very rare and very um, great investments. Um, all right. So we just talked about cause he has over 800 products on StockX. He's super popular uh, in the U S but he's also like really, really popular overseas. So which of these countries outside of the U S buys the most cause? Um, we have Germany, Hong Kong, or England. I'm going to go with Hong Kong. I, I feel like I see like anytime I'm trying to cop something cause that's not from the United States, it is from Hong Kong. I was going to say Hong Kong feels like the obvious answer to me. So I'm going to go with Germany because Germany has like a gigantic art market. So 
Isaiah wins this one. It is Hong Kong. Uh, and it's Hong Kong by a pretty gigantic margin. Again, Germany and, and the UK are also up there. They're 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 the three yeah. biggest, these are the three biggest markets outside the US. Hong Kong, though, is like on a per capita basis, just buys is just like obsessed with cause. They buy yeah. cause at 10 times the rate of the rest of the world. That is crazy. So, like, wow. Which is which is pretty wild. And if you think of like some of the, you know, kind of like tentpole big like cause um you know projects and initiatives of the past couple of years he's done some really cool stuff in hong kong i don't know if you saw that sculpture um yeah the companion float that he did in in the harbor in hong kong it was yeah. this, this oh, cause so bigger cool. that was floating in the harbor um so he's obviously like done a lot of like outreach to that to that region and and, yeah. and is and is big in that and big in that country um the next question is uh and this is like i think you know, something you'd said earlier, yes, sir, which is that like comic books to, in, for a lot of people are like the entry point into the art world because, you know, I think, again, like all this stuff, it's it's I, it's kind of crazy to say like, oh, there's sneakers and there's art because like obviously a lot of sneakers are art. So but right. like putting that aside and like trying to keep these things separate, I do think there's a case to be made that like the great comic books um, of the last century really do really like, you know, live at the status of of art pieces. Right. Um, so I don't know if you're familiar with with like comic book trades. This is not on StockX. This is just like overall history. But what yeah. is the most expensive comic ever sold? Um, here's the thing, because Nick Cage bought Action Comics, the, the the introduction to Superman. I believe it's just Action Comics number one. He bought that for over a million dollars. And that was in like 99 or something. So uh, maybe a little later, maybe a little bit earlier, but that went for a million dollars. So so we're going to do, okay. Yeah. Sorry. So let's do a two part question. By the way, I'm yeah. So this, this is really Isaiah wins most of these, these challenges and you are the comic book guy. So this question was really designed for you and I'm going to give you two chances to win. One oh is what is the price of, <laughs> of the most expensive yeah, comic? Yeah, yeah. And then the second is what is the actual comic? So okay. sorry, I don't want to interrupt okay. you, but it's a two part question. Okay. So I, now that being said, I weirdly think it's detective comics. I think it's the introduction of Batman and I'm going to say like $3 million. I, I, I kind of have no concept of once they get over like a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the name of it, but I will say uh, maybe like, and this is this is like my comic book answer: the first appearance of Green Goblin in Spider Man um, <laughs> Action Comics, nineteen sixty four. Okay, so and how much? Uh, I'm going to say eight hundred thousand. You know. Okay, so uh, Yasser, you do win the price uh, part. You came very close. It's three point six million. And it's Amazing Fantasy 15, which sold at Heritage Auctions a couple uh, a couple months ago. Uh, and that is the the I believe the first appearance of Spider-Man, uh, yeah. which makes that comic so valuable. But the Batman, Dang. the first appearance of Batman, all those like each of them go for for millions of dollars. Yeah, uh, it's just like another again, kind of, at this point resembles as much like high art, high art world yeah. as anything else. God, the the first so not a lot of people know this, but like in the actual comic, the first appearance of Spider Man, <laughs> it's somebody knocking on a public bathroom door, and Spider Man opens up the door and goes, "Sorry, I was in there a while. By the way, I'm Spider Man." <laughs> That's the first appearance. Is that he's just coming That's, out of the bathroom? He's at a deli. He's, he's just, coming out of the bathroom, and he says, uh, "So there's like no backstory. It's yeah. someone." And he goes, and and he says, "As a second part, he goes, by the way, and by the way, my name is Spider Man." And they go, "Oh, nice to meet you, Spider Man. Uh, I just need to use the bathroom really quick." Oh, like, okay. Uh, is he in costume or is he just no? Yeah, yeah he's, he's in costume. It? He's in costume. You know, yeah, he's, oh. he, yeah. He just had to use the bathroom. You know, that's it's wow, hard to find an open bathroom in the city. So, like everybody, yeah, gets especially back then. Yeah, <laughs> wow, that's interesting, yeah, man. Public toilets were like they're in far between. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this was like the 60s, right? Oh, my God. All right. Well, Jesse, thank you so cool. much for, for uh, you know, thank blessing you us. And um, can I say this? I'm going to be real. We love you. Oh, thanks, guys. Yeah, fun I with love you, man. You too. And for that, we're given, you're definitely getting the StockX credit. So, you know, it's, yes. uh, it's been a pleasure. Yes. All right, Big Zay, we are back. And this is this is kind of, you know, it's a cold front's coming through, but then there's a heat wave right after Isaiah. We're forecasting heat. But, like, who are artists that you are excited or that you think people should know about that you even just want to shout out um, that that you just want to give some flowers to? I, I do want to shout out uh, Jasmine Rodriguez. She's yeah. at 
jazz on vinyl. She does a lot of work with vinyl. Um, she's just, uh, I mean, she's just a, like, you've seen her work. She's done yeah, yeah. Uh, personal stuff for me. She's just amazing. She's an amazing artist. Um, she does uh, Marvel characters. She'll do like pet portraits, but she also just creates things on her own. And she has such a distinct style that it's like, I, I've, it's a style. It, it is a style of art I have never seen before personally. And that's why it drew me to her, um, immediately. And, uh, I got her actually to paint a, our, our me and Yasser's business model boys entertainment, our logo. I, I asked her to do a portrait of our logo in her style. And, um, she just asked me a couple questions about myself and then she came up with this entire concept for my for my uh, for my painting. I will post the day that this episode drops. I will also post work from her alongside, so you guys can check it out, including the sneakers, which I didn't even know she did. I just asked her if she would do some. I bought some Supreme. I accidentally bought too many Supreme name tags when they dropped. I meant to get like a pack of twenty, and I actually got like I think I got ten packs of twenty. I don't know how that happened, but I asked her to just doodle on some and she yeah. doodled on a bunch of them for me. And uh, yeah. all the work is just great. Like she's just, yeah. uh, she's just a wonderful artist. I really, really dig her work. So a big yeah. shout out, big shout out to jazz. Yeah, no, I, I ride with her heavy. Um, uh, was there anybody else? I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Um, I have a few more. Uh, I'm going to do Lanice Howard, who's another figurative, black figurative painter. She's out of this world. Um, I want to hit Irene Shiori, who's a tattoo artist who also has moved into, like, murals. She's absolutely incredible. Um, I also want to hit uh, Tula Lotte, who's a comic book artist. Uh, Carly Jean Andrews, who does these incredible, like, uh, pencil and ink portraits of, like, just everyone. She's she's so good. Uh, hyper, hyper talented um, and I think that might be it for me. There's just like so many people I enjoy, but like, I, I think those are like kind of, oh wait, sorry, Antoine Washington and now, oh, and then finally, uh, I'll say one more. It is Geneva Ellis, who I just does these really insane, just like almost illustrative portraits and Henry Taylor. Those are the people I'll go with. I, I adore them. Um, and, uh, if we were to do an art gallery, Isaiah, what's the content? Who's invited? Where is it? What are you serving? I think that, uh, you know, you can, (laughs) you can like record highlights on Madden. Like you can like capture your highlight. Maybe I'll capture some highlights of my Madden game, my FIFA game. Oh, wow. You know, I'll have those on a loop. That's pretty cool. Play, play like, uh, you know, some old music, like, like play like, um, uh, what is that? That LFO, the yeah, summertime summer or girls, or, yeah, yeah. summer girls, and just like a, a looping clip of my highlights on FIFA. Um, I think that's kind of cool, actually, or just like the score to a <laughs> horror movie and my highlights on FIFA and Madden. That's what <laughs> that would mostly be. That would be what I was into, and just like yeah. shirts that I cut up, you know, it's like Isaiah was in the, yeah, I call this one bad mood, I call this one Monday. <laughs> Monday afternoon. <laughs> oh my god! I don't know. Stop. I'm actually, I'm actually cutting you off. Stop. <laughs> uh, I, you know what my my gallery would just be wherever my heart feels, and it would be filled with pictures of my brother who I love so much. But would you rank them? Would you rank the pictures and why? No, no, no. I just have pictures of you. That's really nice. Like a consensual pictures. Like I'm awake and stuff. No, right? no, I don't know. You don't know. It's just you. That's unsettling. That's unsettling. I don't know. Hey, man, it's art. But you don't know know where you would have it. Uh, I think I would like put it dead center of the country, like somewhere that you're not expecting, like Tulsa or something. Like that Prada store. uh, Yeah, like Prada Marfa. Marfa, Yeah. 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 That'd be cool. I would put it, um, I would, you know how they redid uh, that Saved by the Bell, the Max? They have that stupid museum. I would put it in there. Yeah, West Hollywood. I would just do it there. So people would be like coming for that and they'd be like, oh, there's actual art in here. There's just there's clips of Madden playing with a horror movie score. <laughs> I, you, I'm, I'm stopping you. <laughs> with a horror movie score? Yeah. <laughs> That's cool, man. It's like the, um, the Michael Myers music underneath it. <laughs> but it's just like people hitting each other and throwing touchdowns. Or, or like or me like crossing up somebody in 2K with my player. 
Oh, okay. that would be a good. That would be like my player. So I always do my player face scans really quick because this is art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, they come out true. terrible. Like not just yeah. not just like oh, this kind of doesn't look like me. It's like my face looks morphed. Yeah. So yeah. I would do like maybe I would yeah. have a progression of my my player face scans, which yeah. I do. I do post them frequently on my Instagram as well. Yeah. And uh, people have their favorites. People have ones that they don't like. And they let me know. Yeah. They let me know. So I guess technically that is art. Like that's a kind of like an NFT, I guess. That's that's an NFT. That's an NFT. It's definitely okay. an NFT. <laughs> Everyone, thank you so, so much for listening to History of Heat presented by StockX and uh Headgum. Uh, it has truly been uh, one of the greatest experiences I've had. I, I love this show. Uh, so much love to uh, our producer, Danny Sellers. Thanks so much to Jesse Einhorn. There's a whole team of people that uh, that can be thanked that I don't have all their names in front of you. But thanks to all of them. Uh, uh, thanks to all of you for listening. Uh, we hope that you continue to listen as you are enjoying your lives. Uh, Jesse, do you have anything you want to say to the folks before we, before we sign off? Uh, no, just uh, thank you guys. This was, uh, such a pleasure. And, uh, you know, I hope, uh, I, I hope people learned a little something and had some fun along the way. Yeah, absolutely. And if you didn't, that's on you. It makes you dumb. <laughs> it's really I'm talking your fault. To you. Yeah, it's really your fault. Um, <laughs> and gave you all I, the information. <laughs> yeah. And I want to thank my my co-host, my my brother, my everything, <laughs> my uh, my guy, Isaiah. Uh, thank you so much. What do you want to say before we head out? I uh, know. Just thanks, man. Me and Yasser, we did this podcast sneaker thing for a while. So to come back this way and do it this way was uh super exciting and fun and we just had a good time we just had a good time doing it the guests were amazing um everything was just so dope and um yeah i'm glad i'm glad that we got to got to do this and i hope you all enjoyed it um yeah that's i think that's it like and like you that's said if you didn't it. learn nothing that's on you that's on you you know that's on you, man. <laughs> that's on you man you know um Thank you again so much to StockX, HeadGum, D Sellers. Find Danny Sellers on Instagram. He's a tall, lanky black dude. He's, he's a comedian. Funny. He's hilarious. <laughs> Check he's him a out. very Man's funny. funny. Yeah, that's yeah. why we're telling you to. That's why we're telling you to follow him. Uh, find Jesse on all the platforms. His, I, I think, is I think his Instagram is just Jesse Einhorn, um, and it's got like a very colorful Abby. Find Isaiah yeah. on Instagram at Isaiah Lester Films. Find me on Instagram at Yasser underscore Lester. And uh, that's it. Thank you guys so much for listening. We will catch you next time. Be safe out there. Uh, Stay healthy and uh, take care of your families and one another and yourselves. And we will see you all soon. Peace. Peace. Thank you. original.